So I, I hear a murmur when <laughs> the topic was announced. This topic <laughs> is, um, I do have a feeling it's slightly different than most of the topics that deal with you know, history, facts, uh, linguistic, other present cultural things. My topic is quite philosophical, philosophical, theological. Uh, but uh, wish me luck. I'm going to try to <laughs> make it simple in five minutes or so. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware uh, of the fascinating and uh, also extremely successful in many ways developments in uh, artificial intelligence, uh, new technologies, um, deep learning, machine learning, and also combined with robotics and so on. Uh, in, in practice, this is uh, the area of culture of science that is developing very rapidly and we can, we can now see it used uh, in medicine, in predicting all sorts of things in, in the industry, predicting uh, weather patterns, for example, also more problematically predicting human behavior, human voting behavior, as you know, uh, Cambridge Analytica scandal had to do with AI or the use of AI for such purposes and also most problematically, of course, in military industry, AI is being tried out in secret or not so secret anymore. So uh, artificial intelligence is definitely something hugely culturally influential and is going to become more so in the future. But society's uh, ethical, uh, also legisla legislative and philosophical and let alone theological responses to all that development are quite slow, uh, patchy, and uh, sort of disorganized. I think particularly so with theology, because theologists has traditionally looked back and tried to preserve the continuity with the, the tradition and so on. The topic of the research I have actually only started working on recently uh, is on theological responses both to AI technology as such but also to the philosophical underpinnings of AI, which is often sort of um, intertwined with, with the uh, cultural portrayals of, of uh, usefulness of AI te uh, technology. Uh, I've started looking at Christian uh, theological responses and uh, also about possibilities of the new ones for the future. And I, you know, uh, hoping to, because I believe this should be done in sort of Abrahamic conversation, a Jewish and Muslim responses, uh, philosophical and theological as well. So just to mention two major streams of philosophy of inte uh, artificial intelligence or new technology, uh, they would be called post-humanism and transhumanism, and I only am really concerned with post-humanism. Transhumanism is something I'm less interested in, and I will try to say very briefly why. <laughs> Post-humanist philosophy is premised on sort of radical critique of uh, humanism. And by humanism, I don't only mean secular humanism, also Christian, uh, Jewish, and Muslim humanism. Uh, the view that our central ethical and civilizational concern should be human well-being. This is some sort of orienting center of our ethics and um, other sort of, uh, let's say, civilizational cultural concern. Uh, now thinkers, post-humanist thinkers, pioneers such as Donna Haraway, uh, Catherine Hales, and uh, Rosie Braidotti and other recent thinkers, they reject this anthropocentric focus on man in the past or humanity today uh, as ethically really unjustified. And they combine this with uh, what they say is fair understanding what artificial intelligence is, which now does many things that humans have done in the past only uh, much better than, than humans do. And in the future, we can uh, expect even more of that. While transhumanism is something quite different because I still have only two minutes, I'm not gonna talk about it at all. <laughs> but uh, post-humanism, is uh, interesting because it combines AI with robotics and very much embodied existence of uh, artificial intelligence. So the idea would be uh, artificial intelligence should be attached to bodies that move in space and they have a sense of uh, being enabled to do something in the world, not only as software somewhere stationary in some kind of faraway computer. So theological responses to that can be quite different. And I've, I, I'm interested especially in two kinds. I'm not interested in completely rejectionist responses that would say it's revealed humans are only special concern, therefore AI is suspicious, we should not uh, engage especially with philosophical bit of it. 
Rather, I think there is kind of one religious humanist response which attempts to restrain uh, AI philosophy not to go too much against humanism. And it would be built on the concepts of human dignity or imago dei or image of God in Jewish, but also Christian, especially Christian, but also Jewish thought, which are interpreted some, somewhat differently. Uh, uh, and uh, it then has to answer several challenges, uh, su such a view. And that is exactly that AI is becoming more and more capable of doing things that human does, not only in thinking, computational intelligence, also in action through robotics, and uh, many people say in the future also relationally, you could not anymore distinguish whether kind of uh, social, social comments of a, uh, a human-like intelligence is artificial or it is human. So we have several strands of image of God that we have seen um, uh, traditionally as attached to humanity being uh, uh, also replicated by AI. And then another, very briefly, another response is more eco-theological or uh, organic, <laughs> bio-organic theological, which would say image of God is something of degree. We are not so special compared to the animals. This has been biased anyway in the past. We have to theologically rethink that. And then the line between AI and and uh, uh, other beings is this organic. This is flesh and blood beings. Me, we and other organic beings against the machines, right? <laughs> there are challenges to both those types of, uh, of responses, but maybe in questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.